My name is Robin Hesselgesser, and I'd like to welcome you to the show. This show is really about creating change. So the people that you meet and the stories that you hear every week will hopefully empower and inspire you to make positive change in your life. So whether it's about your financial status or your career or relationships or just wanting to live your best life, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us today. We are with Tom Lloyd once again. He is the founder of College Funding Organization. He has flown all the way here from the warmer <laughs> climate of Arizona. Tom, thank you for being here once again. My pleasure. We've had two episodes prior to this one and we've talked briefly in the, a lot of time that we've had about you and your story and your organization and that you've been around for 40 years. That's right. That's, that's a little bit of I time. I know I don't look that old. You don't. I, that was going to be my next comment. That was going to be my next comment. And you have four children. Yes. And for you this all started because at some point it dawned on you yes. that all four kids were going to be in college pretty much at the same time. That's exactly right. And you thought, huh, maybe I should look for some creative ways yes. as to how to fund this, correct? Yes. So your organization was born. That's exactly right. We got a small grant from an education foundation out of Colorado to help us put this together. And with a lot of help and encouragement from interested community members, parents, business leaders in the community who wanted good things for their community, we were able to grow this to where now we have over 50,000 members on a national basis. And our members, our students, have received in excess of $1 billion in money that they don't ever have to pay back That's incredible. to help them pay for college. That's incredible. So it's not a grant. No. It's not a loan. No. It's money that they actually earned through their good grades, their test scores, their community service, and through knowing which colleges to approach and how to approach those schools to get them to compete for a quality student to attend their school. You know, today college is big business, and colleges want the opportunity, as your viewers will know, once you graduate from college, that's not the last time you hear from your college. <laughs> They're in touch with you regularly, asking for your generous contributions. We're going to build a new dormitory. We're going to build a new science center. Can you send us a little something-something so we can help make this a better place to be? Yeah. So that's really where the money comes from, from the generosity of former students and alumni who give back to their school. And yet colleges don't want you to know about this pool of funds that are, what? Four, 600 billion. $600 billion. That's incredible. You know, uh, a number of years ago, almost 30 years ago now, the federal student loan program changed to make it easier for people to get loans. And once the colleges realized that everyone could get loans, instead of using the endowment fund as the first line of defense to help students get their education, they simply f file a financial aid form and then say, well, you didn't qualify for any need-based loan, but if you need more money, how about or any need-based grants, but if you need more money, how about a loan? Mm -hmm. How about a loan for the student? How about a loan for the parents? They call it the PLUS loan. It sounds so nice, PLUS <laughs> loan, but it stands for the parents' loan for their undergraduate student and parents have to start paying that loan right away and it's challenging for them to get rid of those loans because really the only way they can get rid of them is if they would be unfortunate and die before the loans paid off. The government wants that money yeah. and so these loans have to be paid back. Absolutely. So we're trying to show parents how their children can complete college using the least amount of loans, the most amount of free money, preferably this endowment money and many people in the community, Rotary Clubs, Lions Clubs, Sertoma, uh, various clubs and organizations in the community sponsor these scholarships. In fact, for as little as a couple thousand dollars, a student can receive 
30, 40, 80, $100,000 or more in money. And you know, if I'm a Rotary Club and I normally give a $2,000 scholarship to a boy and a girl in our community, that's a wonderful thing. But believe it or not, a couple thousand dollars is like one trip to the bookstore and it's gone and forgotten forever. Right. Through our organization, a small hundred dollar a year dues and a fee that the student or a donor could pay on their behalf can make certain that year after year after year after year the student gets the money they need to help them complete their education. College is big business and you have to treat this like a business decision. And knowing which schools to approach to get that money is really the key ingredient. And your philosophy, the way that you go about this whole process, and correct me if I'm wrong, is even if a student is absolutely certain, or they think they're certain, on which college they want to attend, to you that doesn't matter. You, no. you, you want competition. You want to have schools buy against each other for That's that right. student's attendance. You know, for most of the important purchases we make in our life, we shop around a little bit. Mm -hmm. We negotiate a little bit. And yet oftentimes I see parents go, well, I guess I'm going to have to just go into debt. It's $60,000 to send my student to that school. Yeah. That's going to be $240,000. I've got to figure out how to pay. And if I can, I guess I have to take loans. Well, if you have competing colleges that are trying to recruit that student, there's competition that occurs between these schools. I know we're in big red country and I know they know who the competition is out there yeah. when it comes to funding for college. So getting students who have five, six, eight, ten, twelve colleges trying to get them recruited to their campus, nothing encourages a student to come to your school more than a generous scholarship award. Money that does not have to be repaid. Absolutely. So that's really how we do it. We get these kids six, eight, ten, twelve schools that have offered the money and then using a proprietary negotiation strategy that we've developed over the last forty years we teach the student how to go about competing with those schools to give them more money so they won't lose that student to another college. It's not but a they're good, not alone, correct? They're you're, not. We have, have a coaching their... staff okay. that helps them. Uh, the one thing that we try to encourage parents to do, and it's hard to do, is mom and dad should not try to be the negotiator. Every mom and dad wants their kid to get more money. <laughs> it isn't wanting the money that matters. It's putting pressure and using leverage to get the college to reach into the endowment co coffer and give that student more money. In a way, it's kind of funny money because the college never really gives it away. If they give a student a $30,000 a year scholarship, the college takes that $30,000 out of one pocket, puts it back in the other, and says to the student and parent, now you guys come up with the difference. So it really amounts to a reduction in the price of college. Why does the college want to do that? Well, from that day forward, you can be certain mom and dad and the student are going to be hearing from the college regularly, reminding them, remember when we gave you that $30,000? scholarship every year, now the same way reached out and helped you, help us help somebody else by giving something back to the college that helped you get your education. So they use the leverage of the money that they've received from former students and alumni to encourage future students and alumni to give back to the college. How does it impact if a student has grown up, for example, here Yeah. and knows that they want to stay here and that in-state tuition, how, how does that, does that matter? Does it well, impact? Well, it, it does. You know, when we're parents and we're looking at the cost of college, oftentimes we look at the sticker price. <laughs> Absolutely. And the sticker price is not what students should pay for college. Nobody with our knowledge should pay full price for college. There are ways to reduce the cost of education by simply knowing which schools to approach and how to approach them. We're not trying to change any student's ideas about what dream college they want to go to. We're trying to show them how to get the money, how to put the pressure 
on the college they'd like to go to to be more generous with their endowment fund. And you know, any of your listeners that are, and viewers that are watching that have attended any of the local or state schools, pretty sure they've heard from those schools recently asking for their gifts. So this is an ongoing process. That's where colleges make the majority of their money. It's not from the tuition, the fees, the room and board that we think the college uses to make their money. That's the smallest part of the revenue they receive. The majority of their revenue comes from the generosity of their former students and alumni who give back from their successful careers and lives to help their college do better and attract more people to that school. So helping these kids know which schools to approach and how to approach them is really what the process is about. And that's why we reach out through a network of volunteers like you, Robin, mm -hmm. who take your time away from your work to reach out to the community to help families get the money they need. Well, we're awfully glad that we're in, you're in our community, community now. Um, so I know that it's, it varies. The Nebraska in-state tuition for a sure. student is incredibly different than, say, if they wanted to go to an Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. But what is, what is the average cost of a four-year college well, now? Well, these days it's, it's approaching $200,000, and there are, we just recently got a letter from the University of Chicago saying that they intend to be the very first college in the United States to charge $100,000 a year for a student to attend their school. Any of you who've been watching school costs over the last 40 or 50 years like we have know that none of them have gone down. Yeah. They've all gone up As in with cost. all things, yeah. And uh, you know, when I attended school here, uh, it was easy. You could get a job at a hamburger stand and maybe a part-time job and along with a little bit of help from your parents you could get through school. Nowadays the cost of college for one year is often more than a student who just graduated even makes their first year in the marketplace. So Isn't college has gotten so expensive yeah. that you just can't work your way through college anymore. Yeah. You have to have some financial help. Yeah. And unfortunately, most parents by default, if they don't have the cash on hand, they either take money from their pension, their retirement, their home equity, or worse of all, they take loans creating what now is a $1.6 trillion student loan debt problem. Yeah. So through networking with people like you and the volunteers in the communities all across the country, we're able to get the message out. The students and the parents make the final decision. That's not our role. Our role is to show them where the resources are and how they can build a brighter future for their student by having choices. If you only got one house in town and the price is X, you pay X. But if there's 20 houses for sale in town, you're going to negotiate till you get the deal that's right for you. And that's what we're showing students. There's over 5,000 public and private colleges and universities. And even though I may end up going to college someplace that I don't want to live the rest of my life, I'm only going to be there four or five years. Right. This is not where I'm living the rest of my life. I'm preparing for my future by committing to that school. And if they pay me the money I need to go there, that may be way better than paying the in-state tuition. You know, Schools here in Nebraska don't really have to do too much to get all the kids they want from Nebraska. They all want right. to go to their school, their right. favorite school. Right. So thinking about outside the box thinking, thinking about out of state schools, private schools, other schools that they'd never considered before, those schools are often motivated to give that money because they want a diverse student body. They don't want everybody in class to be the same kids you've been in school with since you were in kindergarten. They want different diverse backgrounds, experience, cultural, religious. That's part of the education process. Well, and it, and it, and it, brings, it brings growth to the communities that they are in. Absolutely. I'd imagine that there's times that you have certain frustrations. When yeah. doesn't it work? Well, probably it doesn't work the most when we cannot get a student to commit at least 30 minutes a week to communicating with the schools and foundations that we've reached out to on their behalf. That's the most challenging. 
you know, non-compliance, I guess you could say, is really the only thing that we, we deal with. If a student won't communicate with the schools that are trying to recruit them, if they won't spend that half hour a week doing the things that we show them to do, they're not going to get the best value for it. So we have a written agreement that we provide to our members. We call it our promise of value. And if they're going to go to school over four years, they're in high school right now, we commit to them in writing they're going to get $30,000 or more in funding or we give them their membership dues back. 30000 mm -hmm. Our average student receives $66,000. Over the course of, of the four years. Okay. That's the average. That's significant. So that's the best of the worst and the worst of the best. Right. There are some students that get $200,000 or more in money that they don't have to repay. And obviously, good grades, test scores, community service, career goals, those are all important considerations. And high school counselors and teachers do a good job of helping students fine tune that. And if the student doesn't get that kind of help where they are, we have systems within our organization to help that student evaluate, what am I going to be good at? What do I love doing? What is my future? Where does my future look brightest? What am I good at and what can I do the best to give back to this world and support myself and my family? So those are all the tools that we use, but our focus is primarily financial. Again, we're not affiliated with any school. We don't have any particular background, religious or political background that we're focused on. It's all about the student. So that's really what we target, is the focus on that student, each individual student. And I love that. And do you know one of the things that I love about your organization? It's, I remember when my daughter, who's now 32, mm -hmm. got out of college or was, or was just about ready to graduate, and it was time to start looking for gainful employment. Yes. It is so difficult now to make yourself stand out because everything is so automated. You know, yes. you, you, you have to apply online. You often interview over the telephone oh, or yeah. take some sort of assessment test yes. online before you ever meet another human being. Yes. And I think that's such a shame, but it's, it's so hard to stand out, to make, and for the student that maybe doesn't have perfect grades in high school, Mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that your company really steps in and provides that coaching and helps them stand out for the individual that they are yes. and for the skill sets and strengths that they have that can't be compared to the average and might not be seen if they were just thrown into the into the pot. I love that about your company. Right. Well, part of how we help the kids pick the right schools is we look at what is that school's reputation for having gainful employment for their students six months after they graduate. Which colleges do the best job of that? And when our students become sophomores and then transition into their junior year in college, we actually have a part of our process that helps them begin networking with the alumni of their college. When I got ready to graduate from school in Shadron, Nebraska, I talked to other teachers that were in the community who had graduated from the same school I was at and said, if you were in my shoes, what would you do to get a job? Mm -hmm. What would you do to put yourself out there? There's a book written by the people that wrote the Chicken Soup for the Soul series mm -hmm. called The Power of Focus for college students. And when we bring students into our program, if they're already in college, we have a guide that we give them to show them these are the things you can begin doing now that you're about ready to graduate from college to lay the groundwork for that bridge and transition from college, academic career, to gainful employment. And knowing how to go about that knowing which schools have the best reputation for making sure that their students have jobs after graduation. You know, it's unfortunate. There's a lot of people out there with college degrees in their pockets delivering Domino's pizzas. Yeah. And it isn't because they needed a degree to do it. They just don't know what to do with the degree and how yeah. to market themselves. So just getting the degree is not the end all. You've got to figure out, now that I've got my degree, how am I going to use that to move forward in some direction that I want to choose. 
How many of your viewers right now have a degree and are doing something totally different? I was just going to say that life is essentially backwards. I, I read the other day that 60% mm -hmm. of college graduates are doing nothing Yes. Respective to whatever, and I'm I'm one of I was one of those that I'm I, one of them too. <laughs> I changed my major oh three or four times. Most do. Yeah. And and you know the reality of it is college is about proving that you're trainable. Yeah. <laughs> that you can follow directions. Oh well, that was my problem. <laughs> and you can, <laughs> and then you can get to a goal yeah. uh, and mm -hmm. complete something successfully. Yeah. So the fact that people end up in different careers isn't always a bad thing. No, That no. might have been great that they studied a certain thing yeah. and now they go a different direction. That's okay. It's that experience of accomplishing something and knowing that you have to do A, B, C, D to get to where you want to go. And so... Well, and it's the process of elimination. Yeah. I mean, I look back and I, I, I'm glad that I didn't know. Um, I, at the time, I envied those people that did, who at six years old knew that yeah. they wanted to be a physician or an attorney or a teacher or mm -hmm. uh, work on the line as their father or mother did. I, yeah. I envied those people because I simply didn't have that clarity. Yeah. But, but that's okay because sometimes we need to try different things and investigate. But that's like I right. said, life is essentially backwards. Sometimes we have to figure it out as we go. Exactly. Well, we appreciate the opportunity to tell you about what we do, and more importantly, we appreciate that you, Robin, and people in your community help us to reach out, to reach those families that we can't reach from Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. So thank you very much for giving us your time and effort on behalf of your community. Oh, we're happy that you are now in our community, and uh, I, I, I want to... Uh, I want you to talk maybe just a little bit more about that sponsorship, you know, how other people can get involved and Yes. And uh, help. community members, we have some community members that don't even have children. Sure, they, I'm sure you they do. They were never blessed with children and <clears throat> yet they have a desire to help someone. Maybe it's the person who mows their yard or shovels their walks or just someone next door that they see and know and appreciate. Uh, they can sponsor an essay competition in their name. They can help us come up with a topic for the essay that will be challenging and revealing. Mm -hmm. And they can help us promote it through the local schools, through the media, through the news, uh, to help through those students. Through their clubs or organizations yeah, that they Yeah, through their clubs to. that they're part of. Yeah. We have many church groups that are, they have youth groups. And you know, we're all taught to be good stewards of whatever resources we've been blessed with. Mm -hmm. And so we have many church groups that bring people like you into the c school to talk about what students can do. And you know, we give a lot of free information away. Not everyone has to join. In fact, not everyone can join. Right. If we can't help someone, we tell them that right. because we're giving them a written commitment that if we don't do what we promise to do, we, we give them their membership dues back. And I guess the good news is, in the 40 years we've been doing this, we've never had to give anyone their dues back. You haven't? We've never had to never? because we've always been able to hit the mark. And the main reason is because of people like you who took the time to sit down 30 minutes to an hour with the student and their parents, learn about the dream and vision of that student's make sure that mom and dad were supportive of that student's goals and dreams, right. and then work together as a team to help make sure that student have the resources they need and the guidance they need to get to where they want to go. And we've talked a lot about, we've, we've said the words uh, mom and dad and parents a lot, but I do want to make it clear that uh, for students that, doesn't, that don't have that particular support sure. system, grandparents can get involved. Uh, aunts or uncles or admissions counselors or right. neighbors or uh, foster parents or really anybody can be that circle of support for a student, correct? Absolutely. And work with your company. That's true. In fact, you know, you probably have the premier uh, organization that the whole world knows about with Boys Town right here mm -hmm. in, in Girls in Boys Town right mm -hmm. here in Omaha mm -hmm. started with people who really in many cases had no one right. to guide them right. and help them get to where they go and needed to go and, and help them with that dream, both emotionally and financially. So those service clubs, 
groups that want to help someone in the community can reach out to you, Robin, and let them know that, uh, let these students know that someone does care and that someone is out there that can help them get where they want to go. Well, I applaud all of your efforts. And Thank I'm you. excited to be able to help you spread the word in our community and, and help people understand uh, the benefits of what you do and how you do it. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us You're today. You're very welcome. Thank you. And uh, as my stepmother likes to remind me, uh, building s uh, steps to heaven, you've got a space shuttle in your, <laughs> in your path. So <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Uh, have a safe trip back to a warmer climate. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. This is Robin Hesselgesser. Thank you for joining us today. Next week, we hope to inspire and empower you to make an even better change in your life. See you next week.